Today we're talking with Drew Purvis, a senior scientist with Microsoft Research. Hi, Drew. Hello. So you've worked on uh, ecological modeling since completing your PhD. What brought you to Microsoft to continue that work? Well, I was at that stage where you know I've done a lot of postdoc work, so I have been doing the ecosystem modeling for a long time. And um, I was at that stage where I would have taken an academic job, and then this crazy job advert came up about ecology at Microsoft, and I just I genuinely felt it just felt like a, a unique thing, right? Just just curious. Um, and, but also I thought, well, maybe there's different stuff that you could achieve there. It's a very different environment, computer scientists and the whole Microsoft computational right. software development, all that kind of stuff. So maybe I could do something different there than, you know, get done in a university environment. Academic, academia is great, but I just thought it just felt more unique, I guess, you know. Great. That's interesting. And so why is ecosystem modeling important? Like, what does it contribute to science? Well, you know, we're doing so many different things to the, nat the natural world. Um, you know, from local to global scales, whether it's climate change, habitat loss, invasive species, pollution, growing food, uh, we being humans. Um, and the idea is that we really need to try to understand at a deeper level what we're doing to the natural world and where, and where the natural world might go in the future, either under a kind of business as usual scenario if we just right. carry on, or kind of what can we do about it to create a more sustainable future. And so we can't do that all based on verbal kind of instinctive guesswork. So the modeling is about getting all the data together, getting our understanding of the problem together to say, can we actually understand and foresee the effects that we're having on the environment? So I've also heard that uh, you're essentially modeling all life on Earth. Is that true? Yeah, I know. It's true. It's one of our more out there projects. But yes, we are. I mean, we have a, a model that attempts to simulate um, all of the plants and all of the animals on Earth, you know, land and sea. Um, everything they're doing, you know, growing, wow, uh, dying, eating each other, giving birth, the whole lot. Um, it's like a giant kind of computer game in a way, of like, like a virtual world. Right. Um, and the idea is uh, we need that to, to give this kind of integrated understanding of what we're doing to, to ecosystems. It's early days right now. This is a, the first time anyone's attempted to do that. And we're just kind of getting the ball rolling. But um, yeah, it's a very exciting slash weird project. But. Very cool. <laughs> so. How will advantage, uh, advances in computing technology help us solve um, problems in ways that we haven't been able to solve them before? Well, one of the interesting things for us is how much we can benefit from you know, kind of computer science and computational thinking and computational methods in general. Um, so you know, to do this job well, to build these sorts of predictive models of ecosystems well, we need to be very rigorous and careful in the way we deal with data. We need to program these models correctly, we need to make them interface with each other properly, we need to study the uncertainty in the model right. predictions and all this kind of stuff. So it's, so it's really important that uh, we take this ecological science and put it within this kind of computational framework and right. we can absorb so much of the skills and experience that we find around us in Microsoft research. You have people in machine learning, people in computer vision, people that can know how to run simulation models on distributed right. computing systems. I was surrounded by these incredibly smart computational people that like, you know, that I don't know much about that stuff, but I do know about ecology and I know <laughs> how we can benefit from all that stuff for sure. Right. Yeah. Well, the, you know, that brings up the question then, what's next for the computational ecology lab? Well, um, we're starting to think more about the role of humans in the Earth system. So, you know, the what we found is as we've taken different aspects of the Earth system, started to model them, whether it's forests, whether it's you know fisheries or etc., that they're all connected. So you think about, right. for instance, the carbon cycle, and then you realise you have to think about forests because they're important in the carbon cycle. Right. What's happening in forests? You've got deforestation, so you have to model that. What's driving deforestation? It's your demand for food. And so on. So more and more, we're thinking about how these models integrate with each other. Um, so that's the kind of intellectual next step, in a way. But but also, we're really keen to see if we can have scale what we've done up a bit more. So release more tools, train people in the academic community to to, to use these tools, form key partnerships, um, and also reach out across Microsoft because you know we didn't take I didn't take this job to be a resident artist. Uh, you know what we it would be fantastic if we could get. Um, working with you know, all the smart people we have across Microsoft to see if we can get some of our stuff bulked up and so on. So uh, it's a pretty exciting time actually for us. Super interesting. I appreciate you taking a few minutes to talk with us today. Oh, thanks a lot. Cheers. Thanks.